here we are again. I was just waiting for Charlie to put his thumbs up. Charlie's with us today. He's got away early from college, so uh, Charlie's back for a little bit. Um, I think today, well, well this is going to be the second part of the uh, the little party pop of Canon, which has developed a heck of a lot of interest. I'm really quite chuffed with the interest. If you remember, it was um, a very wet, rainy uh, Bank Holiday Monday that gave us the idea to do this one, along with Eugene Grimley, of course, that very well-known Irish wood turner, a good friend of mine. Um, we came up, well, he came up with the idea, and uh, then myself and Charlie recreated the the project on a, a rainy bank holiday uh, Monday. Oh, probably now six years ago. He's about ten, so yeah, about six years ago. Um, so that's what we're doing. Um, like I said, loads and loads of interest. So I've been a little bit guilty of over -pre over preparing today, only because I realised about five minutes ago that I've forgotten a vital part. So this morning has been uh, spent cutting a few bits out, uh, just prepping um, and gluing bits together ready to, for them to be dry this afternoon and also working with Finley. Finley is um, a freshly qualified graphic designer so um, he's been helping me with my plans. So with his help we've um, made a set of plans for you or cutting list rather. So that cutting list I haven't followed to the letter today. Um, I've just made one as it were, but if you want to make sure that you get something similar and it's based on this one, the cutting list, um, then follow that cutting list. I think Lily's going to be putting that up or has put that up for you. So um, as I said, he's, a, he's a, gone and graphic design as has Charlie, and if you see any of my plans anywhere on, on my website and things like that, it's help with, of them that um, we've been able to create them. So all the line drawings, all the pretty pictures get done by Finley and Charlie. So I'm very lucky, man. Have a couple... Um, uh, useful guys in my back, uh, at the, you know, in, my, in the house. So really, really good. So let's crack on. We've got that to do. If you remember last time, we had turned the main gun. Okay, this bit here, we've done used a little bit of elm for this. And um, we are going to put one drill hole in here in a minute, and it's going to be down through there. It's actually going to be the bottom part of the, the cannon. And that's going to be used to hold everything to the carriage. Um, we've got two holes in it currently. We've got the main one for the party popper itself and then the second one for the fuse. And if I freshly turned up a couple of days ago, a little bag of party poppers, the local stores didn't have one in, didn't have any in, so I had to go online. So that's how they come. Charlie, come a bit closer, would you, buddy? Um, so that's, obviously, you know what a party popper looks like. Everybody has seen one of these. They are different. Don't think that all party poppers are the same size. It's like everything else, you know, these are made in different factories all over the world. <coughs> so um, they are going to be different. This might be different. This might be different. I was fortunate. These were the same size as the old spent one that I had before. So that goes in there. Okay. And then you already see the fuse. We're not going to pull too tight, but we're going to want the little back part of the, the party popper to come through. It will come through. That's why we need a plunger. It was the plunger which I forgot um, up until about five minutes ago. So that was the that was the bit that I rushed around to get. But yeah, then once you've got the back of the popper through, you can pull the cord through. And we're not going to fire just yet. We're going to wait until we finish this one before we make uh, make and go pop. So that's for later on. Let's finish the bits that we're going to make. So that's done. So I'm going to just take over from where I left off. Um, I have turned some of the feet. So you remember um, the last video, we turned one of the wheels. And I then went on to say that I'm not going to make you stay and watch all, all of these being made. Um, I'll do them when you're not here. I've made another two. So just to recap, we're going to make one more because they're ever so quick to make. And that'll give us our four wheels. So this is currently everything in here that I'm making now, or using now to make the carriage, um, is uh, oak. We've got one difference. There's a little bit of maple for the plunger, which we're going to make in a moment. Obviously, the barrel's elm, and we're also going to use some beech dowel because it's a given thickness. I don't want to be turning um, six mil dowels down. For instance, you can see the underneath here, we've got the, the actual axles here. I don't want to be doing that. So six mil dowels, easy. It's out there. It's, it's relatively cheap. Um, so we're going to use that push plate. I don't know whether you remember last time. And Charlie, I think now we come right up, right up in close now. The pitch is um, not too good today. Isn't apparently. it? It's the second time in a row it's been like that. Guys, don't worry. This isn't forever. This uh, this single phone is just for the next few weeks, I promise. We're going to go very, very um, 
high tech and upmarket. And you're going to get several cameras, several views and a much better internet. So stick with us. Stick with us. This has been like this now since early, or well, since March, I think. So. Are you using the AT406 lathe? I'm using an AT406 lathe. Yes, I am. In old money, that's a 1628. Okay, so let's get this rolling. So I'm going to do the wheel, get my glasses on. Of course, safety specs first. Turning here around about 2,000 revs is going to be nice. I'm just turning a square at the moment. The size is the same size as the drive. And if you remember last time we made the drive by just turning a little bit of scrap wood down, putting some router matting on the front face or gluing it to it, and then using it as a push plate from the tailstock. Oh, I've got oh, quite a long question eh? Yeah, go for it. Uh, so it says, hi Cohen, I bought a CW SKU last week. Oh yeah. It feels great, but it won't stay sharp. I'm sharpening on a Pro Edge um, at 20 degrees each side for 1,200 grit and honing with DMT stone. I, I do maybe four or four, three or four cuts in wet, but clean, ash and is dull again. Do I have a dud or am I missing something? You're not missing anything I know. Um, that's a new one. Um, I can't see why that should be should be blunt. Have you checked? Make sure it's not gumming up, especially if it's wet. Uh, wet. That might be a bit of an issue, but um, no, I, there's nothing that I know of that should, should cause it to go dull that quickly. Uh, certainly, I would expect regular spindle turning for a, a skew chisel to last at least. Oh, I probably wouldn't need to sharpen it probably for a good hour, hour and 20, depending on what you're doing. Um, but regular spindle turning, that's that's how long I'd expect it to, to stay sharp. Like I said, I continually sharpen them, but um, before any significant sharpening, that's about the length of time. There we are, last, last, last wheel. I keep saying leg. Last wheel. So we've got four wheels done. So they're all the same. I'll put a little bit of tread in them, of course. Okay, so this is the wheels. So what we got to do next? Let's, whilst we're turning something, turn the plunger head. So the plunger is literally going to be like a like a toilet plunger. It's the best way to describe it, really. Um, and we're going to use a bit of beach dowel again to help us along with that. That's going to be our plunging mechanism. So now going back to the skew, um, I don't have, if I'm honest, I don't have a reason for that. I don't know what's happening with that one. It'd be worth, uh, if it's really going that blunt, that soon, just taking it uh, back to the store or just inquiring as to why. I wouldn't mind having a look at that one if I'm, if I'm honest. Lily, can you take a note of that one, please? Don't everybody know I've said that. Um, Look at me as your returns um, facility. I just, um, I'm interested. That's, that's the signature skew is to see what's happening. That's all. <laughs> uh, right, so plunger. I've already drilled a six mil hole in one side. This is a scrap bit of timber that I've, um, I don't know what I was turning that into, but it was, uh, I think it might have been one of the projects earlier today. But uh, yeah, six mil hole in one side. So I'm going to use that in the, which way should we go? Let's go, um, Light pull drive in that end. These videos are all, um, as you're aware, they're all completely live with, with myself. Um, and a lot of the things that I'm doing here, I know the project, a lot of the fixings and things are, well, I'm just sort of uh, working on holding solutions as we go. I'm not pre-thinking too much of that. So um, there's many options as to holding. So this is this is the way I'm going for this given project. Oh, Charlie, you had a question, I think. Um, is there any reason not to use a thread adapter on the SK80 chuck rather than replacing the chuck to match the lathe? So you bought a new lathe, I'm guessing. You got the old chuck and you want to just use an adapter. The only issue I have, I'm not a fan of thread adapters, and the reason being, 
Um, if you use a thread adapter, that's another two faces that are touching each other. So every face, every machine face that touches each other, even though these machine faces are done on um, highly accurate CNC machines, every single face is another face that could throw in potential error. Um, and it throws the whole thing further away from the headstock, all that sort of stuff. So um, at first glance, no, but then if you can avoid it, do. So light pull drive up the 6mm hole. And what I'm going to do now is take it down to the diameter. I want to make sure it fits inside the cannon, of course. So I want to make sure that that is the diameter inside that hole. There we go. So I can't remember what the drill, what drill size we use. So that looks to be, so if I make this 27 mil. I'll use my power for that. Um, is the flexible pipe on the light dust extractor stand better than the slot that comes with the stand? Yeah, well see, I've always done this. It, is it better? Well, for me, yes. Because I can, the, the extractor that I'm using is an impeller type extractor. Um, and I find that I can duct the suction from it closer to my workpiece. If I was doing this and I had the long slot, I wouldn't be able to get it that close because I've got all this in the way. This is so small, I can really get it right in. Saying that, an impeller type extractor will not let you go too small on the nozzle, otherwise you'll cut all the suction. Vacuum, different story altogether. You can go small on the nozzle, yes, you'll get good suction, but not the impeller type, so the bag type, for instance. So. This works for me because it stays, the, I'll keep it to four inches anyway, and I can put it wherever I want to. Um, it won't clout or you know, get caught up on anything. Um, it's called stay put hose. It's, you buy it in meter. I use a half meter at a time, um, and that works really well. So just making this smaller than the cannon the hole up the cannon anyway. Take all of it down to that. So that was just the beading and parting tool. Now we're just skew cutting with a bowl gouge. I know that doesn't make sense, but you can see what I mean. Middle 45. So that's going to be the back. This is the flat face. So to start with, let's get some shape going. Make it look like a flanger. Six mil hole at the middle, don't forget, so I don't want to. Um, so this is from Dave Cackett, and he says, I have been using a beading tool, but keeps getting a catch, or the tool skids across the blank. Is the tool rest too high slash low? What am I doing wrong? Okay, several things. Beading parting tool, just like using a skew chisel, tool rest needs to be high, so you need to be above centre. Um, if you're almost struggling, just start with use the heel like I'm doing here. In fact, let's go to beading and parting tool. Use the heel, and the bevel must be rubbing. Now, the, the minute you do that with the handle, can they see that, Charlie? Yeah. The minute you do that with the handle when you're beading that way, you're pulling the bevel off. So make, make sure and discipline yourself to keep your handle in line with whatever you're cutting, then the bevel can rub and then that should eliminate most of your catching, okay? Most of your catching. I'm not gonna pretend that it, uh, it's a long journey to, to get right or, or competent with a skew chisel. It takes a bit of practice. Um, a lot of skew chisel issues come from a bit of nervousness um, because when it catches, you're concentrating and it makes you jump. Still makes me jump if I get a catch, I do. Um, so, uh, you know, it's practice, 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 and then a bit more practice. But yeah, do, keep that handle in line, bevel rubbing, bevel rubbing your hair all over the place, that's it's key, really is key. I'm going to do a couple of shout outs now, if you want to um, look to some 
fantastic skew work and you're on Instagram. Three people, Stephen Wood Turner, Dave Dolby, Richard Finley. Look at all of those guys, you will not see better skew masters out there. Okay, that's basic shaping done. What we still have is an untidy face that side though. So very, very quickly, keep me uh, in touch with time, Charlie, because um, yeah, I know. Okay. this could run away with me. So I'm just going to quickly change the chuck. I've uh, got another question here. Go for it. Uh, so this is from Helen Smith. It says, I need to lower my lathe as my bench is too high. Would it be safe to use a lightweight folding bench if I change the wood and add foot holders? Uh, is, yeah, I mean, as long as it was substantial enough, Helen. Um, that's it. You think about, you, you know, no, I'm not trying to teach you to suck eggs or anything, but you've got to think about your own safety. Make sure it's sturdy enough, strong enough. Vibration is going to be a bit of an issue if it's not. Um, it'll be quite tinny, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, just a little bit of care with that. Um, or build yourself, you know, three by two, something like that. Build yourself a, a, a bench. You'll probably do a better job, if I'm honest. Um, so I'm using a bit of six, six mil dowel. In fact, I'm being silly here. Let's take that out. What I'm going to do, instead of doing that, why don't we see what I mean about working on the fly? Um, I'm just going to cut myself a little bit of dowel, and that dowel will be the finished result then. Well, that will be our plunger. So, just adjust the camera, Charlie, if, it's, if it needs it. So what I'm going to do, our plunger needs to go right to the bottom of that. So let's mark and have a little bit of space. So there's our plunger. A little B-block, a little Japanese pull saw. Saves you a lot of time and loss of fingers if uh, you're tempted to use a bandsaw, please don't. Let's have, um, do, 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 do I have a little bit of glue somewhere, Charlie? There's a big, our glue there. That's just this bit of scrap wood from that tub there. Done the tiny, tiny little bit of wood. Doesn't have, doesn't have to be big yet. Yeah, that's fine. And then one of those coffee stirrers on the table over there. I'm doing an article at the moment for Wood Training Magazine, which is to create a big three-tier Christmas carousel or pyramid. And um, we're using coffee stirrers and, and lollipop sticks as uh, as fence posts, as um, picket fencing. So I've got an excess of lollipop sticks. Um, so we're gonna pop a little bit of glue. If you've used beach dowel before, you understand that beach dowel is compressed as well. It's like biscuits on a biscuit jointer. And the minute you add glue, you get a massive amount of uh, expansion. Um, so that's going to stay in there. That's going to be my finished plunger once I've just faced this off. Um, not a huge amount of strength in that though. It's only a piece of six mil dowel. So, so we can't go and take a massive cut. I'm just going to use small gals just to clean that face. That's all I want to do. I want to show that I've actually paid attention to it. Quite fast, tiny little cut. In 20 minutes. There we go. A little bit of a brace there for not doing too much sanding. This, I would say, this is a lovely weekend project. Get the kids, the grandkids, nephews, nieces involved. Obviously, make sure they're nice and safe. Dust masks, visors, all that sort of stuff. There we are, we have our plunger. I better just test it and make sure it will fit down. 
There we are. So we got our plunger to plunge our poppers in place. So a little bit of sanding next. So I've already pre-cut some of the carriage. I just want to show you that before we go on. And again, I've used some oak. I'm going to use Old Faithful in terms of SK114 and C jaws. And something that you've seen an awful lot. Sanding disc. Um, what jaws would you use in place of your industrial chuck? In what what jaws would I use in place of my What jaws would you use in place of your industrial chuck? Industrial. Uh, industrial what jaws would you use? Okay. I don't fully understand the question, sorry. Um, in place of my industrial chuck. So I, these chucks that I'm using here, so these are the same jaws that I'm using on these, I would use on my smaller chucks. So if I was using an SK100, for instance, I would still use the same jaws on those. Um, so the jaws pretty much stay the same. Ah, oh, um, you might, uh, do you mean these? I, I think that's probably what you mean. So on my old chuck, right. Um, so we'll, again, we sell the same jaws that attach onto this chuck. Um, they are step jaws, internal and external step jaws. We're also just uh, revamping those to make them um, uh, fit to the jaw, the chuck in the same way with the two screws on the top. So they're coming out very, very soon. But for the moment, you've got the, the, the um, internal and external jaws with teeth on the back, so they slot straight in. He said for holding the dowel. For holding that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So go with, um, those, those jaws, or you can go with something like these pin jaws. And so the internal here works really, really well. Okay, so either of those two really. Pin jaws or the, index, or the internal external jaws. Uh, failing all that, make yourself a set of wooden jaws. So go for a set of wood plate, wood plate jaws, which then you fix your wooden plates to. And then you can do the, whatever you want with them. You can make them bigger like O'Donnell's. You can make them close down to zero. Um, you can do all sorts of things. This is a set that I've made to hold little earrings. So just a, a, a groove in here. But yeah, there's, that's the wood plate jaws. So three options for you there. So we're gonna do a little bit of sanding. So let me just show you the carriage that I've made so far. Um, well, I haven't made it really. I've just glued a few pieces together. Um, so there we are. So um, two, differing sizes. Now, um, those sizes are on the plans um, that Lily's supplying. I'm trusting that Lily's got them and, and has supplied them. Have you seen anything, Charlie? She will afterwards. Oh, brilliant, okay. So all these sizes are there, um, but from memory it's five inches, four inches, and then a weird one. I can't remember, it's just a little bit, a little bit less than three, I think these. Um, but you can make them all the same. So that's gonna be the two sides of the carriage. I just wanna give them a quick sand, but also the um, separating pieces. So the bit that uh, actually separate the, the carriage um, apart and the gun carriage rests on. I just wanna sand them a little bit as well. So we'll pop the dust extractor on. I'm just gonna give them a very brief sanding. Um, I need to sell. 
but just for your memory, if you remember what this is, the carving plate or carving attachment for the um, um, uh, our tool rest, um, the Evolution tool rest, the Evolution collar, um, and the carving plate. Now the collar just means that I can just drop it in and I'm already at centre height, so I don't have to mess around. And if you're struggling with heights of a tool rest, there's another good reason to have one. You can set that to the same height either, either time. I know that we keep, we, um, I keep telling you that we go high for um, skews and low for gouges, but just set it for the low position. And then you know, if you pop a pencil between that and the, the, um, the saddle here, then you're at the right height for skews, for instance. So at least it takes, eliminates one of the um, measurements away. So it's quite a nice little thing to have. The, the collars aren't a huge amount of money. I think they're under four quid. Not a lot, of, not a, a huge amount. Um, right, that's can come away. Now we've got a little bit of drilling to do. So I haven't told Charlie this yet, but we are going to move to the drill. A little slow copy. Okay, move to the drill. So there's a few bits that I wanted to drill. <clears throat> Come on over, Charlie. Sorry, I'm in the way. Perfect. Perfect. Right. So, if you think about drilling now, what, what have I got to drill? I've got to drill. It's only the body of the main gun here. So I've got to drill through here. I'm only going to drill through the fat part. I'm not going to drill through this bit, even though my old ones were drilled through that bit. It's a little bit too thin and I've actually come through on this one. So I'm just going to do the bottom. Um, we've got to come through for the axle here and also these two areas here to hold the joining pieces. Um, the axles are going to be drilled with a 6.5 drill bit and everything else was six. I want everything else to be firm, but the axles I want to actually spin around. Okay. All right, so I've got a six mil bit in there already. So let's drill all the six mil um, bits. That includes the joiners. I want to um, drill those. I'm going to do this really roughly, guys. So I'm just going to set this, set center of those by eye with a braddle. This is one of the braddles that we made, you remember about two months ago now. Um, this braddle and I made the, the mallet on the same video. Um, it's gone really, really well. There's a load, a load of views on this one's probably one of our best ones. So if you wanna know how to make this one and the uh, mallet, go have a look back on the Instagram um, history and you'll see, see us making one of those. Nice little project, that one. And I just use that to Center up. Yeah, so I very roughly, is that focused in there at all? Is it a bit dark? I won't dwell on it. If not, it's, yeah, it's a bit dark, okay. So I want to make sure that these are all drilled in the same place. So I've just made a little template. Um, so these are for the wheels, okay, and those are for the joiners. So six mil, 6.5 mil, okay. So all I need to do then is marry those up. So just with a pencil, and then that gives me my Right place to drill. This shouldn't be shouldn't be rocket science. This you want to make this nice and a nice project. We don't want everything anything too accurate, too overly complicated. I'm not the right man for the job if it was. Right, so we're going to go. You can if you want to. I mean, I haven't on these. If you want to do a blind hole, do a blind hole. Makes no difference. Um, I haven't. Uh, I'm not going to on this one. Just a bit quicker, that's all. Um, so let's drill our holes. Let's wind that up a little bit first. So 6.5 and 6 mil. Let's just do the 6 mils. So am I blocking that out completely? Further? No, it's quite a good angle. Is that all right? There you are. <laughs> Before I get too many people sort of saying, oh, health and safety, wear your fingers, all that sort of stuff. This is a six mil drill bit. I have every confidence 
that I got a hold of that. If it was a force of it, a sawtooth bit, then there's absolutely no way I'd hold this by hand. I put this straight in the vise. There we are, so two holes drilled at, at the moment. Whilst that drill bit's in there, I'm gonna to go to my B block. Been half hour. Okay. Go to my V block and we're gonna drill one hole. I'm just guessing where, but I wanna go there. That hole is roughly eight mil deep. It's only a joining hole. I don't need to be structurally um, overly strong, so we need to be there. And then one more six mil hole I need to drill, or sorry, two more six mil holes we need to drill. And I'm gonna use a clamp for this one. Um, and they are in the joiners. Okay, so we want to, I'm just gonna clamp them in there. Make sure we're upright. Okay, all six mil holes drilled. We can move on. We're gonna change the drill bit to a 6.5. 6 6.5, as long as it's over six mil, 6.3, 6.4, whatever. Um, don't go too big, otherwise your wheels will be flopping around all over the place. more of those. And well, we have all of our holes, so we should should be all joined up we fortunately are. I'd have a little bit of a panic on if we didn't. Right, excellent. So we can leave that alone now. Let's go back to the lathe. We're going to start assembly of our bits and we're going to have a, a bit of a launch as well. A minute. So what I might do now we've done that is I might just give it a little bit of a sand No, we're good to go. We're good to go. Being over fussy there. All right, just back a little bit, Charlie. We're going to do a little bit of assembly. So I'm just going to pop a board on the lathe. Right, 
I've done this. Um, I've done this as an article for Woodsy Magazine. I can remember the photographing of this, and me and Charlie. It was me and Charlie, or me and Phil. I think it was a year. I can't remember. The final oh. shot on our patio. Probably we went through a whole bag of party poppers just to get and photograph that moment when the actual streamers came out the end of the cannon. I've oh, since, yeah, yeah, that was me. That was you. We've since learned a lot more about our cameras um, and uh, and photo bursts and all that sort of thing. So it'd be a lot easier nowadays. But there. So let's put things together. So carriage first. Well, I'll just dry for this. We won't glue anything. So we, we just need some short dowels for... to join these to our joiners. I'll do those first. So remember what I said, we're gonna be using our beach dowel here. So I need to do four about that size. Once I've got this on, we can then start working out. Oh, there's one hole that I haven't done. I'm going to just quickly disappear and do a centre hole. That centre hole is going to join my cannon onto the joiner. I just very quickly need to do that. So let's rough that out. You, you can stay where you are, Charlie. You can pivot around if you want to, but not a lot to see. Just a six mil hole in there. I want this to be a firm one. Don't forget tomorrow, guys, you've got uh, Mr. Steel, Craig, doing another video for you. I'm not quite sure what he's doing tomorrow, machinery or power tools or routing, it'll be one of them. And I know I keep saying it, but there's loads to look forward to because we really are looking to up these videos and do more, get more out there for you. Both in terms of IT and in content, you should have a video to suit everybody, everybody's hobby coming your way. So let's start assembly. All right, Charlie, can everybody see all right? Ish. My first the first hour is going to be the one that connects the actual cannon. Okay, I'm going to come through a little bit further. Yeah, well, that's the first one. The next one, the side of that needs to be able to go into into the um, sides of the carriage. So in turn, we're going to put a couple of little dowels in there. joiner made so far this one we're only going to be is only going to be an emplacement so it's not going to be stuck to the cannon just something for the cannon to rest on it's been 40 minutes 40 there you go So the first two can be put on nice and easily.
Garage is looking good so far. Oh, I put them around the wrong way, apart from doing that. No one told me that, did they? All that hard work and I put them around the wrong way. I didn't glue it. There we go. So now we can pop the cannon on. I'm just gonna I'm off camera to do this because my face is gonna go really red because I've got to put a fair bit of pressure on there. And I don't want to start hitting the cannon. There we are. So that bit in the front there, that literally is just a, a support. It's not connected. The only connection is the one down here. Okay. And like I say, at the moment, it's just loose. It's still fairly sturdy, but it's loose. Uh, well, loose. It's sturdy, but it's not, you know, it's a dry fit. It's not glued. There we are. So next, we've got to think about our axles. So let's just pop that one through. Oh, let's go a bit longer than that. And it'd be reasonable to think that they should be the same same size. So we're going to cut them both the same. None of this um, dowel is wasted because I use it to pin all sorts of things together. Um, from the smokers we've done a few weeks ago to a project you'll be seeing in the next few weeks, nutcrackers, um, to pyramids, Christmas carousels again, you'll be seeing them in a few weeks. So all those things. So, wheels. <laughs> they are six mil. Um, Drilled to six mil the wheels, so nice tight fit. Here we should have. through then we can add the other other wheels I'm just checking to make sure there's enough room I don't want I want them you know free enough to spin that front one can go in a little bit more back a wee bit. So we may as well prime them both, haven't we? So we're gonna me and Charlie are both gonna have a go at this. Yeah, that's better. 
right now I can pull the string through so what we're doing is pulling the string through all right make sure the camera can get it come a little bit further back no I can get it on oh, from this side ready one two three there we are Excellent writing, Charlie. That's us done for the day. That was a bit of fun. Um, reliving <clears throat> Charlie's childhood there. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. It, uh, that was a nice little project. That build was live. Um, the only thing I prepared was just gluing these pieces together this morning. I roughly cut them on the bandsaw first. Um, I didn't plane them or anything. I just sanded the, the, the faces. Um, made myself up a little template, and of course that template you can make, oh, you can use over and over again for, for drilling. Um, there's nothing difficult in there. An absolute novice, a complete beginner could pick the tools up, get the lathe home the first day and just make something like that. Um, the, the most difficult thing there I guess was the drilling, and just being accurate, make sure you don't drill too far, that sort of thing. Um, get your party poppers first, don't do what I've done, um, uh, f found that the shops didn't have any, so I had to order them online after I had already drilled the hole, I was lucky, um, to, but to get the party poppers first and, and drill to it. So there's a couple of little carriages, um, Charlie pass the other one behind the carousel over there, just to show your, your first design. There we are. You have your own imagination as a limitation so have fun with that guys um, if you want to look um, it will work out a bit more we'll see a little bit more on skew uh, work like I say Steve Woodser, Dave Dolby, Richard Finney they're all great skew um, users of course keep coming back for our videos because we're using the skew all the time um, so there's, there'll be lots to see um, until next guys uh, next time guys and um, that'll be Thursday, of course, enjoy. We're going to do a big crotch section of um, cherry uh, on Thursday, so that's going to be quite exciting, going to be messy, and, uh, and there'll be shavings flying everywhere. I haven't quite figured out what we're going to do with it, but it'll be fun, whatever. So until then, um, enjoy your turning, and join me again 4 o'clock on Thursday. Um, thank you very much. Bye-bye.